Hi, I'm Kurt Mitchell. Welcome to the Nirvana Tape. We have a lot to discuss. I want to get straight to it. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tune up by giving you an A or open fifth string, and then you tune yourself to my A, and then tune the rest of your guitar, and then come back and check and make sure we're in tune, and we'll proceed with the rest of the tape. There's a few tunings in this tape. There's, a, there's one riff that's tuned standard. We're not going to get into that. And there's a few riffs that are tuned a whole step down. But for the most part, what happens with this particular tape is that we're tuned one half step down from standard pitch. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you an open A, open fifth string. You tune your A or open fifth string to mine. Check the tape, make sure we're in tune, and then we'll proceed. Or if you have a tuner, the better idea is to tune yourself one half step down with your tuner, okay? Here we go, let's tune up. Before we get started with our first riffs, I want to say a few things about this particular tape. This guy, uh, Kurt Cobain, he used a lot of gadgets um, that I've read about and, and you can read about them in a lot of guitar player magazines and stuff, especially since he passed away. Uh, but it's not very important. The main effect we're going to be using is a pedal chorus and it's used on most of the distortion stuff. I don't want to get tied up in all that stuff because you can get lost in all that junk. Um, he used pretty cheap stuff that you can get pretty much anywhere. He used to play a Fender Jaguar, which I used to have and got stolen from me. I wish I hadn't. It was a 65 and really nice guitar. Uh, he was left-handed, obviously. Um, he wasn't a very good guitarist. Uh, what he was was a great songwriter, okay? Uh, and he used the guitar to convey his songs and get his words out. And, and, uh, and he used the guitar as a tool to get the songs done. You know, he wasn't Eddie Van Halen. He wasn't trying to be and didn't care. Um, of all the Seattle guys that came out of this whole era, which crushed what I was doing when I put my album out, I was with a band called Bangalore Choir, and we were doing that corporate rock thing, and my hair was all puffed out, and I was really cool looking, right, and makeup and all that crap. And uh, they crushed that because it was honest, it was uh, meant for themselves. If you write songs for yourselves, uh, most of the time what will happen is they come out sounding good or unique. Uh, now, he's not extremely unique, this guy, Kurt wasn't. He's got a lot of influences that I hear, a lot of the Beatles in him, a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's some police in him, uh, and there's some Black Sabbath in there. Um, but the main thing I want to convey to you about him is that uh, his melodies were extremely good, his songwriting was extremely good, his hook lines were extremely good, whether he meant them to be or not, uh, I don't know. Um, and... Uh, like I said, as a guitarist, he wasn't very good, but he didn't care. And uh, what came across to me is that of all the Seattle bands, or the main three, there's like Pearl Jam, uh, Nirvana, and, uh, and the other one, Soundgarden. This guy was the best of them all. He started the whole thing because he came out and made it popular first, but this guy was the best of them all. This guy was the most tied up in songs, and as far as I'm concerned, had the best sense of melody. He also had a great... Uh, rock singing voice, man, which, you know, I don't know if he even gave himself credit for, but his voice was great. You can't buy a voice no matter what you do. You can learn to play the guitar all you want, but you can't buy a singing voice. His was incredibly good. Uh, it's too bad he's gone, really too bad he's gone, because it was a stupid thing to do, and, uh, and it's a shame because there was a lot more songs than him, you can just tell. Anyways, we got a basic distortion sound going here. We're half a step down. We use a chorus pedal on most of the stuff. Other than that, it's just straight ahead and hard pounding rock music. You'll notice that uh, this one's clean to start with, and then it gets 
distorted. So we're using our volume knob to do that. And what 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 seems to me to have occurred is that uh, when they were in the studio, they did a clean track and then they did a distorted track. But what we're going to do is just crank our volume up. It's easy. To, it's easy to do if you have a good amp and a good distortion sound. You can either have a distortion pedal and click it on and off from clean to dirty, or you can have. Uh, a good distortion sound that'll clean up easy for you and then it, there's a lot of distortion in this there's a lot of distortion in these riffs and there's no mids in the amplifier too turn your mids off uh, if you want to get authentic sound turn the mids down A lot of chorus in uh, this particular one. This is one I'm using. I, I picked it up so we could check it out. Um, but and it's an old thing, boy. I've had this thing since I was like 20, and that's a long time ago. Um, but I got the depth turned way up, and I've got the uh, the rate turned kind of down, so it's sort of swirly sounding, right? And it sounds to me like he also had some effects in the studio going on on these on this stuff too. So, anyways, and you can get these. This is not, if, if you're not going to use exactly one of these, there's a lot of chorus pedals out that do the same thing. All right, let's check it out. Thank you. 
we moved to a strat here and what's cool about that old jaguar i was telling you about is i'd taken the pickups out of it right um because i was i put uh demarzios in it right um back when they were the thing to have um not that they're not now um but i took my jaguar pickups out of my guitar and i stowed them in all the junk that i keep when i fiddle with my guitars and uh this is an old Strat. This is like a 69 or 70 or something like that. And uh, I took and put the two Jaguar pickups in it. So it's got a Jaguar type of a pickup sound. But, I mean, it sounds more like a Strat than anything. But it's just kind of cool that I have those old 65 pickups in this thing. But we're a Strat. We're doing a Strat here. Uh, middle pickup. A whole step down. A whole step. So tune your guitar instead of a half step down. Tune it regular. It's not detuned or anything. But a whole step down. Okay? Let's get on with it. This is 11. sounds really police like to me the old Zenyatta Mandana and uh, in those old police albums um, it's real clean and it's got a lot of chorus on it um, so here we go it's riff 12 Here on Rift 14, we're going to some, to buckets of distortion. So just jack the distortion up, and and you and you should be able to get it. Remember, no, not not too many mids in the sound. Rift 14. Next couple of riffs um, are tuned up to standard pitch. Okay, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it down one half step. We're, we're up to half a step, normal tune. I'm going to leave it there uh, to show you these couple riffs. If you want to play along with a record, you're going to have to either tune your guitar up to normal pitch, or you can capo at the first fret and just shift everything up a half fret. It's kind of hard to do because it's hard to visualize because you get used to seeing the fret markers where they are. But uh, it's a lot easier to tune your guitar up and then tune it back down to play along with the rest of the songs. So uh, here's the next couple of riffs uh, in their, on the record in normal pitch, in standard pitch. I'm going to show them to you half step down. two riffs uh, these are a whole step down uh, the first one's clean second one's distorted whole step down here we go Thank you. 
next couple of riffs, we're going to move to our acoustic guitar, okay? These are a whole step down also. These next couple of riffs, uh, we're going to plug our guitar straight into the mixing board, okay? Um, it's a really odd sound because the speaker moving with a microphone causes a sound, right? It's, it's the reaction of the speaker and the microphone diaphragm and the mixer that cause it to sound like an amp. When you plug the guitar straight into the mixer, you take that out of the loop and it sounds very strange. You have to fiddle with it quite a bit to get it to sound right. So these next few riffs we're going to be plugged straight into the board and then we're going to use a distortion pedal to uh, get some sound and it's a pretty wild sound so here's how it goes. we're back to only being one half step down. One half step down from normal pitch means there's two, there's two tones, a half step's the one in between. So if you're at standard pitch and E, you tune to E flat, that's here. And when you're a whole step down, you're tuned literally down to D. Your E string's tuned down to D and the rest of your guitar is correspondingly tuned down one whole step. Here's the next riff.
These next few riffs are in drop D, some clean, some distorted. Uh, the first one's clean, the next one after that's distorted. Um, drop D means taking, we're a half step down still, that's our standard pitch for the entire thing. Uh, and then we've taken our E string and tuned it down one whole step so that it matches your D. So if you play your fourth string and then you play your last string, your sixth string, they'll match in pitch but they'll be an octave apart. Here we go. D pitch back to uh, E, but we're still a half step down. Okay, half step down E string, normal tuning. Uh, our D's no longer dropped, or our E's no longer dropped. We're back up to E. First riff's clean, next one's distorted. Okay, here's the next set of riffs.
here on Riff 41, we're drop D, straight in the board, clean tone. This second album that he did, it seems to me that all the clean tones were straight into the board. It seems to me. Okay? But remember, chorus on most of it. Here we go. That about wraps it up. Uh, there's a song to play too at the end here. It's the same one that you heard at the top. Um, just to practice too. It's fun to practice to him. Um, I need to reiterate the fact that this guy was a really, really good songwriter and a real good singer and played songs that he meant and and when he took his own life he really did us all an injustice because he wrote good songs. Um, Man, and I'll tell you, I never had any respect for him as a guitar player until I realized that it was all about songs, and it's not about how fast you can play, and it's not about how ripping your leads are. You can have... Malmsteen's a perfect example. Malmsteen can really play lead guitar, in some people's opinion, or at least he's got dramatic solos going, if you know who Malmsteen is. The songs, don't cut it. This guy wrote songs that he meant. They're good songs. They have great melodies. Uh, and uh, it's just too bad that there aren't going to be any more. But uh, anyways, I had fun doing this. Um, I, I learned a lot, like I always do when I, when I delve into these these people. And uh, I, I enjoyed making it, and I hope you enjoy uh, playing along to it. And until next time, I'm Kurt Mitchell, and I'll see you later.